Welcome to Things You Should Know, The Great War. Today we are going to go over to what is known as the Isonzo Front, or the first of 12 battles of the Isonzo River, located on the Isonzo River in northwest Slovenia from the mountain Kern to the Gulf of Trieste, with Italian commanders Luigi Cadorna, Chief of Staff of the Italian Army, Pietro Frugani, Commander of the Second Army, and Emmanuel Filberto di Savio, Commander of the Third Army. I butchered those names and I am so sorry. Under them were 225,000 soldiers comprised of 18 divisions, 252 battalions, 111 cavalry squadrons, and 700 guns. Standing opposite them was the Archduke Frederick, Supreme Commander of the Austro-Hungarian Army, Franz Conrad von Hotzendorf, Chief of Staff, Archduke Eugen of Austria Tetschen, and the commander of the Southwest Front, Svetozar Borovic, von Bonia, commander of the 5th Army, Eza Lukakic von Simorja, commander of the 5th Mountain Brigade, and finally, Guido Novak von Ariante, commander of the 1st Mountain Brigade. Under their command was only 115,000 men in 8 divisions, 84 battalions, 13 cavalry squadrons, and 356 guns. This all happened between June 23, 1915 through July 7, 1915. Italy, one of the last countries to join the Allies before the Americans, entered the war in 1915, almost a year after the start of the war. Upon their agreement to join the Allies when they signed the Treaty of London, the Italian commander Luigi Cadorno planned on taking the area promised the Italians from the Austro-Hungarian Empire. Defending this area were ethnic Slovenes and Austrians themselves. His goal was to break through the Slovenian plateau, including Lupnia and Vienna, between the Adriatic Sea and the source of the Isonzo River, using what he thought were better tactics than the cowardly and ineffective Western Front. He believed machine guns were not effective, and that was why Western Front had stalled. The men were scared and allowed the machine guns to intimidate them. Commander Cadorna was sure that if you just rushed the enemy, the machine guns' ineffectiveness would be clear and the Italians would win. So while he waited for the treaty to be signed, he trained his men how to charge in mass. The campaign would result in 12 distinct battles between the 23rd of May 1915 through the 27th of October 1917. From the very beginning, the Austro-Hungarian Empire had reinforced the defenses guarding their flank, laying huge networks of trenches, machine gun posts, barbed wire, and other fortifications as strength multipliers. They had to send most of their troops to the front. This would allow them an easier way to defend with the limited soldiers they did have. This would help them when the Italians invaded with up to a nine to one advantage. This would also be a key because the Italians didn't believe in long artillery attacks. Therefore, the Italians would never damage the trenches and barbed wire enough for his troops to reach the defenders. The initial thrust of the invasion, called Primo Sebalzo, or Operation The First Jump, on May 23rd met with success. They took Monte Nero, Monte Calora, and around the mountain tops of Plezzo. Once they reached the Austrians on a high ground between Isonzo and Tolmino, however, they were stopped hard. The Austrians maintaining their defenses they would use in the future for their own attacks. Meanwhile, Gorizio was the scene of more horrible fighting, with the Austrians and Slovenes used in the natural defenses of the area. The river itself was acting as a moat. In Gorizia, the street fighting was brutal, accompanied by artillery strikes and a threat of constant fire. The Italians reached the suburbs themselves, but were stopped again by the Slovenes and Austrians. Two Austro-Hungarian commanders were recognized for their valor and tactics. Major General Novik von Arianti overtook Hill 383 with his 1st Mountain Brigade, and Major General Geza Lukacic von Samoria, commander of the 5th Mountain Brigade who retook Redepubia. The Italians relented on this first battle of the Sanzo River when Hungarian General Svetzor Borovic received more than two divisions of reinforcements, nearly a full 25% replacement of his troops. By the end of the battle, the Italians were only able to secure the Bovic Heights on Mount Cannon and the most western ridges of the Cross Plateau near Fogliano, Monfalcone, and Redepuglia. The losses were not heavier than many other battles. It stood at 15,000 Italians dead, wounded, or missing, while the Germans themselves lost about 10,000 dead, wounded, and missing. However, before the Caporetto operation, 11 battles after this, the Italians will have suffered more than 645,000 dead, wounded, and missing, while the Germans themselves would lose 450,000 dead, wounded, and missing. And now for a new aspect called the news of the day. We try to give a little bit of color from the reporting from the same papers that reported the battle. We noted an article on a June 23rd, 1915 issue of the Chattanooga Daily Times that advertised a tonic that would help a man turn back time to his youth again and how he'd be able to engage 
engage with women like he used to. Yes, folks, it is an erectile dysfunction and aphrodisiac claim. Saying things like, how oh, would you like to turn back youth again and feel like a boy again? Feel the snap and fire and the ginger and strength of a young man in all of his glory. Evidently, this was all for $2 a box, or per the advertisements, 7 cents a day. It is funny how no matter how things change, they always seem to stay the same. Join us again next time on Things You Should Know, The Great War. Thank you.